So everything is a completely different universe right now. Even if this moment is different by one hand movement and everything in the universe is the same, or even just one rotation of an atom or a subatomic particle, if there is difference whatsoever, it means that that moment is a completely 100%, even if everything else looks the same from the previous moment, it's a 100% new, completely distinct, parallel universe. So everything can look the same. Every atom, every subatomic particle, particle can be in the exactly same uh, energetic configuration as the previous moment. But if only one subatomic particle in the entire galaxy or in the entire universe is different, it means that all the other particles that look the same like the other ones are actually other particles. They're actually other, they're in other dimension, they're another universe. And every moment is like that. Every change is a complete change. Every change is a 100% new, or not so much new from the timeless point of view, new from your point of view, universe. So change happens all the time. It is absolutely inevitable. It's the nature of reality. It is the only constant. Make sense so far? Cool. So everything changes. You can't hold on to anything. You can't hold on to a static identity. What you can do, and what many of us do choose to do, is to replicate things to look the same over and over and over again as they go into the new universes. So as they shift into different universes, they assume themselves to still be the same thing. They assume themselves to still have the same identity. They still assume themselves to have the same history and the same future. None of this is structurally accurate. You're always changing your past and you're always changing your future because you're always changing your present. And the future and the past are results, products, byproducts of your present orientation. Your vibrational orientation in the now will determine your past and it will determine your future. Huh? Just accept it. Accepting knowledge like this is actually the quickest way to getting to understand it. Of course, feel free to be skeptical, but to accept it to some extent will allow it to actually work for you and, and change the way that you see things. So when you start to see things like I do, then things can change rapidly. Things can accelerate rapidly. You can change rapidly. You can accelerate rapidly. How is, um, how is change established when it comes to circumstances? Anybody? Thank you, vibration. So change does not necessarily happen by me moving this glass from here to over there. That's a byproduct of me being already in the vibrational composition of energy or the frequency overall signature that allows me to move my hand and do this, take this action. This is just a very simple example. But any change in your lives whether it is from poverty to wealth, whether it is from no relationship to relationship, whether it is from not knowing clearly who you are to knowing clearly who you are, anything that you desire in your life, any change that you desire, any change that you're passionate about, these things are established not by doing, as many of you have probably recognized. The more you try to do, the more you try to act, the more you try to change your reality, the more it starts fighting back, even if it's something you really desire. Unless you have no belief systems or resistance towards the thing, then even being in the deed of action can seem like it's effortless. But for many people, um, when we try to change our circumstances and try to fix it to make it look the way we want it to look, if we're still within the same vibrational signature, overall frequency, then it doesn't matter what we do because we're only fighting against our own vibration. So vibration is the precursor for any change. It's the most important step to take is to understand your vibration. What does vibration mean? Well, in most basic terms, it's how do you feel right now? How do you feel right now? And there's subtlety to that. It's not just, well, ultimately it is just you feel good or you feel bad, like at the simplest level. But there's many ways to feel good. There's many ways to feel bad. There's many subtleties to each feeling. Not that you need to dissect these, but they will give you more insight into um, into exactly why you're attracting the things that you're attracting or exactly why you're struggling with what you're struggling. Usually when you can't quite find what it is that keeps generating a similar universe, even though you've shifted through billions of parallel realities from that moment to the next moment of frustration to the next moment of frustration, it is because you're taking something with you into the new universe that doesn't have to be there per se. It's an assumed sense of self or it's an assumed 
assumption of um, of what is possible, or it is an assumed belief in what you're worthy or capable of, or what is normal, or what is magical, or what is outside of the realm of the possible. So as soon as you bring an idea, a vibration with you into the new universe, then that new universe, even though it's 100% unrelated, structurally speaking, to the previous universe that you were in, even though it is completely independent from the other frames that you move through, you will bring with you the same experiences. You will bring with you the same circumstances. Now, this is what we do when we look at a collective level and we talk about warfare, we talk about, um, we talk about drugs, we talk about financial problems, we talk about the economy collapsing, we talk about politics sucking, all that stuff. The, the more we continue to talk about that, the more we bring that with us into the next universe. The next universe is essentially completely empty. Now, it is filled with so many probabilities and it's already filled with so many trajectories because there's seven billion of us co-agreeing to be to some extent within each other's reality. Some very minimally so. But all to some extent we're part of the agreement called humanity. And so we are within a parallel collective reality of our own if we're human. Which means that there is seven billion probable trajectories that are all outputting their energy into the next universe. And so there is a high probability as to what alternate universe will come next and come next and come next down our timeline. That's why certain predictions can be made from an intuitive energetic point of view. It's because you can sense into the trajectory of all the vibrations that make up our collective. So based on these predictions or based on these probabilities, um, how can we even further, which are quite good, they're hectic and they're chaotic and they're messed up, but they are quite good as they are. But how can we make them even better? How can we smooth, smoothen our journey as a collective? How can we make it easier on planet Earth? How can we make the transition easier on nature? How can we make the transition easier on our societies, on our uh, relationships, as well as our inter, um, how do you call that? Inter-country relationships, um, international relationships. Um, how can we make it easier in a way? Not that it has to, because it's kind of fun to see the economy collapse in certain ways. <laughs> but how can we make it? How can we make it easier? How can we make it easier, even on that system, to sort of smooth itself, ease its way into a new way of being, into a new way of operating? Well, any ideas? Yeah. Thank you. Emit. Did you say emit? Yeah, emit. Be responsible for what we emit. Thank you. That's, in a nutshell, what I want to talk about. Because 